Pyramid Book Team. Welcome to my channel. I'm Savahini Vajra Astra. I'm Ohona. Today's video is going to be my quick and very late wrap up of uh, Nonfiction November. Now, Nonfiction November commenced from the 1st of November 2020 and it continued till the 30th of November 2020. And uh, this readathon was created by Olive from A Book Olive and it was. Um, co-hosted by a bunch of wonderful people whose uh, announcement videos I've given in the description box below for you to click and check. Um, also, um, there was a, another readathon, which was a non-fiction readathon, also known as Non-Fiction November, but it also had a different name, which was Drama Queenathon, which I also participated in, which ran along the same side. So um, most of my TBR for Non-Fiction November and a few books from Drama Queenathon also coincided. Uh, besides this, I'd like to mention that um, I really did not get much time to read, and that's because I was away for the Valley celebrations from the last week of October till the third week of November. So I did try to read as much as possible, and I had created my TBR based around classical Indian dance and classical Indian yoga. Now, Olive had given us four uh, words around which we could. Um, create our TBRs according to our own interpretation. So the first um, word which she had given was time. The second word was uh, movement. The third word was buzz. And the fourth uh, word was discovery. So I have, I had created my TBR around these four words. Now the next book which I read for uh, this readathon was uh, 24 Aspects of Mother Kali which has been written by Babaji Bob Kindler and uh, honestly speaking I um, chose to read this book after Diwali and uh, this book after going through it I realized that it did fulfill all the four uh, words which were given by Olive. So it had time in it, it had um, buzz in it, it had movement in it, as well as it also did have um, discovery in it. So this is a really um, rich and wonderful book. It's extremely informative. It's very well written. I thoroughly enjoyed this book and it gives a spiritual aspect and the meaning or the metaphorical representation of the image of goddess Kali. So a lot has been written in this book and um, I really can't talk much about this book um, and I will be uh, just going through uh, what I have um, what aspects have been covered because um, it's really difficult there's a lot of things uh, which are uh, metaphorically represented in very subtle ways and it's been written beautifully of course so this book um, first informs us about the four arms of the goddess Kali and it also has I do apologize that's my phone so um, it does also uh, talk a lot about her wisdom eye which is her third eye it also talks about uh, the meaning of her lotus feet you know, which are twins, uh, twin saviors uh, that uh, liberate. Uh, she talks in uh, this book talks in length about the garland of human heads which she wears, and it's all to deal about liberation of um, the um, attachments to the illusion of the materialistic world. Um, then the, it goes on to talk about her nakedness, which I absolutely uh, loved because um, it is uh, a representation of the pure truth which she embodies and. Um, there is a saying that uh, truth is always naked. So it is the naked truth. So her nakedness is actually a representation or a symbolic and metaphorical representation of the, um, I would say the stark truth which she represents. And also uh, there's a lot written about her um, appearance which nullifies uh, most of the illusions of the world and um, jolts us back into reality. There's uh, a lot about time which is written in the battlefield of reality. Uh, there is also um, a mention about the waistband of severed hands which she wears as a skirt. So um, it actually represents a lot about uh, the perfection with which we are supposed to um, dedicate ourselves to because that is uh, karma 
as we see it. So work is uh, seen as a way of perfecting not only um, the work at hand, but also perfecting ourselves through that karma. And therefore, that wisdom is given by Goddess Kali and she does wear the um, skirt of hands around her, uh, also uh, around her waist, that is. And then there's a lot which is given about uh, the blood of sacrifice and um, Mother Kali's protruding tongue, which is the consumption of the dual universe. Now, uh, there is a corollary which uh, I found very interesting, which has been drawn upon um, or drawn about uh, Goddess Kali, who is um, uh, consuming the uh, blood of demons to uh, rescue and um, rid the world of the demonic position as well as um, and uh, the reason why her tongue protrudes. Now, um, I'm just going to read out uh, this section because this section or a bit of these two sections, because um, this is something which I really loved and that was one of my favorite parts of this book, which is Mother Kali's protruding tongue. So as you can see over here, this tongue uh, is actually her protruding tongue. So originally it is written, I'm just going to read a couple of sentences which will give you a basic idea. So it is, so it has been suggested by some that Goddess Kali in the fashion of the customary Hindu wife is extending her tongue out of shame at having touched with her feet the body of her husband, Lord Shiva, who lies beneath her. Now, there is an aspect which I did not agree with and which is a common mistake, which is to consider that uh, in the iconography of uh, representation of Goddess Kali, um, there is Lord Shiva, who is her husband, who is lying uh, beneath her feet and she accidentally steps on her husband, uh, which, at, which um, ends the entire rage in her uh, on the battlefield and that's because uh, she has already destroyed the demons she has rescued the world uh, she has rescued all the devas and the entire earth of these demons and the demonic positions um, however she does not stop and that's because uh, she's got into um, a very subtle form of anger or rage in which she's just destroying everything and she does not know whom she's destroying so she um, was about to destroy the entire universe out of her rage because um, there were things which she could not accept and she had already consumed demonic blood which she um, in order to ensure that she was saving uh, the world uh, and ridding the demons so um, at that point of time um, Lord Shiva assumed the form of Mahakala now Kala means time and Mahakala means Lord of time so he assumed the form of Lord Mahakala so the person or the deity whom you um, whom we usually see or is represented in the iconography as um, being uh, under the feet of goddess Kali is actually not Shiva but his other form which is Mahakala who is the Lord of time and she steps on um, Lord uh, Mahakala and then she realizes that uh, she because Mahakala actually absorbs all her rage and then uh, gets her back into reality uh, because she was blinded by rage Goddess Kali was blinded by rage on the battlefield uh, but then here he uh, stops her and here he uh, she realizes that uh, she is within a time frame she also realizes that she is um, on the lord of time and the lord of time is um, no one but another representation of her husband so um, that uh, entire iconography is um, not of lord shiva uh, who um, is um, who has um, Goddess Kali stepping on him, but it is Mahakala, which is something which uh, most of the people make uh, a very, um, I would say it, it's a mistake which many people make. But then um, over here, it continues as um, such a thing can be termed as disrespectful, which is stepping on one's own husband in any form. When viewed from the cultural context or the Indian cultural context, this representation, however, if uh, examined, is seen to be not only unsatisfactory but also illogical in the first place goddess kali is certainly not a shy bride she's the mother of the universe furthermore her nature is hardly meek and retiring but instead 
uh, is powerful bold and forthcoming and um, she has not accidentally brushed against her lordly husband's body she has emerged from his innermost heart and is dancing boldly and uninhibited from the boundless expanse of the formless reality which he represents so he is pure consciousness in its static form or static condition and she is a timeless awareness or awareness in a dynamic mode of expression and he is um, the lord of the gods and he is a uh, god of time mahakala and she is shakti his intrinsic power he is nitya the formless and the ecstatic essence of consciousness and she is the leela its joyful and playful expression so this is something which is very beautifully given and uh, also there is um, a corollary which is drawn uh, in terms of blood of christ over here which i found very interesting as well so in this account a more clear and fitting meaning for mother kali's prodigious tongue is introduced uh, she has managed to absorb every drop of blood on the entire battlefield particularly the blood of demons that opposes the force of righteousness essentially she has accepted into herself all the negativity of the universe neutralizing it effectively and leaving the field of existence free from danger and chaos uh, whereas the streaks of blood emitting from her own body represent the very principle of sacrifice her tongue acts as the tool for its accomplishment and demonstrates her willingness to come to the aid of all that suffer from misery and oppression when seen in this light though the sight of the goddess kali's tongue may bring discomfort or aversion to the minds of the naive a deeper understanding of its significance allows for a genuine appreciation and gratitude in much the same way the blood of christ is seen as his sacrifice for the good of all living beings a form of vicarious atonement in christianity in the like manner do the streams of blood and the protruding tongue reflects this principle in tantrism so um this is something which i learned new and uh, i never knew that the blood of christ and uh, that of goddess kali were actually through the protruding tongue were related but then yes this was a corollary which was drawn and in fact there are lots of uh, similarities which i am finding i am reading books on um uh, tantra christianity as well for another readathon which um uh, is currently ongoing in the month of december uh, and over there i'm seeing a lot of a similarity which is happening in the wisdom representation of um, christ as well as um, of goddess kali so this is just one of them so i really enjoyed this book and also uh, the bees uh, part of it came uh, about when um, i read about uh, the um, fact that goddess kali's uh, disheveled hair which is absolutely uh, a shock to the society has bees which is swarming around it so i think it's given somewhere over here her long black flowing hair the intoxicating scent of boundless freedom and the swarm of the bees about her hair is the ceaseless sound of perpetual bliss so this is something which is given there's a lot of other aspects which are given as well it's a beautiful book it's very well written and it's written with, um i did not read this very quickly but i did take my time so it's not that i read it in uh, one um say a period of 72 hours or 48 hours so it can be read that way as well uh, however i did take my time and i read it over a week and um, i really enjoyed this book and if you or if anyone is interested in learning more about the mystical and the um, metaphorical aspects of the um a iconic representation of goddess kali do please pick up this book it's actually very simplistically written and it's really wonderful so that was uh, for this particular book now the other book which i'd read uh, which i had coupled with another uh, readathon which was drama queenathon was apsaras in hoysala art which has been a new dimension which was written by rekha rao and honestly speaking this is a beautiful book i have uh, talked in length uh, about this book in um, the video which i posted for drama queenathon and i've posted a link um, in the description box below for this particular um uh, books video so uh, please do check with that and um also i chose this book because uh, it did talk about um 
I mean, it fulfilled the words of discovery because there was a new way in which Apsaras were interpreted and it's a whole new discovery as well as for movement because Apsaras were celestial dancers. It was also for time because this was before um, ancient India started. So this was the time of gods uh, or the time of the divine beings who or you know, they are timeless, actually. Um, and so um, that fulfilled the time aspect as, as well. And this does not fulfill the buzz word, of course, because um, there's not much buzz about um, Apsaras. They are just what they are. So they are semi-divine beings. So I've spoken in length about this book in uh, the video, which I posted for Drama Queenathon. So if you would like to know more about this um, book, do please check that video. Now, these are the books which I actually got about, which were three. Now, the other books which I was halfway through were, I believe, two. The first one was, I wouldn't say halfway, I would just say a few chapters because I did not have time to get halfway. These are very dense books. I did know that these are dense books, but um, I hoped that I would be able to complete it. But then these two books were uh, irresistible, which were um, the 24 aspects of Mother Kali and Apsaras in Hoysala art. So I read those first. So anyway, uh, I was reading The Yoga of Time Travel uh, by um, Fred Allen Wolf PhD and I've not completed this I've just been through half of chapter three and this book talks about um, and establishes the fact that um, there is a whole new perspective of viewing uh, time as well as yoga the human mind uh, the time space consciousness as well as um, the fact that we have to establish ourselves in yoga when we do our karma it's easier because that way we do not get um we are not reaction based we are more action based so that's something which i really loved it's given in the first few chapters and then it goes to, to talk about the uh, main um i would say the main um theory uh, on which this book is based around which is the and it also draws its corollary to the quantum physics of um, space-time relativity as well so um let me just uh, check with the uh, diagram which is given and bear with me please i'm just going to check so this particular diagram of the bhagavad gita okay so this gives um this talks about um this happens in the uh, battlefield of Kurukshetra in the Mahabharata and it's given in the Gita which is the holy textbook of the uh, Hindus and of the Indian yoga. Um, I mean if you are into Indian yoga you definitely have to read the Bhagavad Gita as well. So here uh, Lord Sri Krishna uh, represents himself in or assumes through yoga his cosmic form and reveals his cosmic form to um, the warrior prince Arjuna who is supposed to be his alter ego and also also, um, over here we see that there are lots of uh, deities who are representations who are nothing but permutations and combinations of time because here uh, it is stated a Bhagavad Gita is looked upon um, or Sri Krishna is um, looked upon as um, the Lord of time. So he is the Lord of time and he is also uh, supposed to be uh, the very essence of time. So therefore he will... Um, any permutations and combinations of time are all represented by his various manifestations and therefore this uh, talks about the fact because this is time travel it talks about how this um, manifestation actually helps a seeker uh, like Arjuna to understand that um, he can transcend the basic um, I would say illusion which uh, pervades and he could go into any sort of time and this is what this book is all about uh, the meditation um, and through yoga uh, you can achieve time travel so it's really very well written and there's a lot of quantum physics which is there there is a a section of string theory which is there in this as well now i have been only three uh, through till half of chapter three and this is what i ha could conclude uh, from um, the half of chapter three so uh, this book has approximately 24 to 25 chapters so um by the time no i'm sorry this has 11 chapters so by the time i get through 11 chapters i'm sure that i'll be able to um have a very good idea of uh, the entire metaphysical theory as well as the um, corollary it draws with quantum physics. So, of course, this is just the portion that I've read and uh, 
I have yet to complete this book. So, of course, this book goes into a DNF section. But then I'm really looking forward to reading this book next year in 2021. Now, the next book which I could not get through was uh, The Speed of Time. I could not touch this book. And it's been written by Sharad Nalaure. So, I DNF this book. The other book which I was supposed to read was Essays uh, on Indian Art and Culture, The Dance of Shiva. I could not touch this book. The third book which I had chosen to read was uh, Be Magical by Bhavna Karankila which is supposed to be a self-improvement book. I could not get through this book at all. I could not touch this book so I will be reading this in 2021. Uh, the other two books which I could not come through or get to at all is Yoga which is written by David Foley but honestly speaking this is a very good book and I did try my best to see if I could read this and pick this book up in November but that never happened so um, I had to DNF this book then the other book which I could not read was Rasa uh, performing the divine art by Susan L Schwartz but um, this is supposed to be uh, quite an intense book and um, although it looks short it's not so I mean the information is quite densely packed so I would need more time to read this book so I kept it aside and another book which I attempted to read I've just been through the first chapter was um, Tantra the Science and Natya the Art of the Two Faceted Reality which has been written by Dr. Padmaja Sureshi I'm sorry Dr. Padmaja Suresh now um, the fact is that uh, this book I've only been through one chapter of this book and uh, it's quite it's packed with information so um, as you can see uh, this is the way that I had to read this book and there's a lot which is written upon the Upanishads and the Vedas uh, etc so um, of course I have to uh, state that it's an excellent book very well written and in case if you are interested in knowing about the fifth Veda which is the Natya Veda and um, its Tantric representation. Now the one thing that I really loved about this book is the fact that it clarifies uh, the entire ideology of Tantra. Tantra according to this book is nothing but the philosophy of Lord Shiva. So that is represented and amalgamated in um, the form of tantra and tantra is a way in which you experience that wisdom so um there's a lot of misconception that tantra is equal to um you know it, it has a sexual connotation in the western world but that is not uh, so um it is moreover uh, and originally it is supposed to be the wisdom and the philosophy of lord shiva on how the world works and um, what is the uh, role of uh, pure energy which is the shakti aspect in the manifestation and how uh, you can with the change of energy the manifestation will also change so dance um, is a way in which you can do uh, yoga in it as well through the dance while you're dancing as well as you can change the entire um i would say the atmosphere of the place and that is all given in tantra and uh, also you can upgrade and make the entire place divine and that was the entire philosophy of the devdasis who were present and this is all done through pure sacred devotion because without devotion you cannot uh, pursue dance so this is something which is very well given and there's a lot which is given from the Upanishads as well as the uh, uh, I would say the Vedas as well and um, a lot is encompassed about the dramaturgical science which it encompasses so um, it's a very very informative book but I could not get through it so I've obviously DNF'd it but I will read this book in the month of 2021 and uh, hopefully I should be able to make a review on it so these are the books which I read uh, for non-fiction November and uh, those books which I read a few chapters and those books which I could not touch at all but I really enjoyed uh, participating in non-fiction November and uh, I hope that I will be able to uh, join um, Olive and um, the other wonderful hosts for this readathon in case if they get together and create another readathon uh, for non-fiction uh, 
or anything which is related to non-fiction or anything which is related to uh, a few words and it was very creative uh, just to have four words and have interpretations around it so uh, thank you Olive for creating such a wonderful um, readathon and I uh, with this I will be wrapping up this video I would also like to apologize for all the background noise that you are hearing because I'm actually filming this in my terrace and uh, honestly speaking um, I was supposed to be filming this a lot earlier but I was busy with a couple of other readathons and a lot had been going around here as well um, during Christmas time so obviously I could not film uh, much but um, I wanted to um, get this done um, right after Christmas so um, that's my wrap up for nonfiction November and I will be back with another video soon. So thank you for joining me today and I hope you enjoyed this video. Do please click on the like button if you enjoyed uh, all the um, content of this video and also don't forget to click on the subscribe button uh, for more upcoming videos as well and please uh, click on the bell icon for all the notifications uh, which you would be receiving and with that um, I would thank you for joining me once again and um, have a good reading week ahead and I'll see you soon. Namaste.